Hey, our first guest of the day is Delegate Larry Kump. Uh, Larry, good morning to you. Good morning, for sure and for certain. May God bless you real good. And I've got a special announcement this morning. Yes, sir. The, uh, tomorrow, Halloween, is the birthday of my late cousin, West Virginia Herman Guy Kump. And boo to you, too. And he was a governor. He was governor for in 1932 for one term. At that time, we only had one-term governors. Governor of West Virginia. Right. You pass his picture when you're in the Capitol. I, I do. And I salute it, even though he's a Democrat. He was a conservative Democrat. He was a conservative which Democrat. Which we would call a Republican now. That's what I would do. Right. They have, they've pretty much all switched. Yeah. Is it a photograph or a painting? Painting. Is it a good one? Yeah, it looks just like him. People say I look like him. I'm not sure that's a compliment or not. <laughs> I guess it depends. It depends. Same way as my underwear. I don't wear boxers or brief. It just depends. Well, that's probably a safe move. <laughs> and I know the chair cushion appreciates that. Yes, it does. Because there's a lot of folks who have to sit there. <laughs> the next guest who has to sit there. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, if you keep this line of question very long, I'm, I'm going to put my mask back on. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just keep this line of questioning going then. Uh, we were having a, a bit of a, uh, a poem off earlier, off microphone. Uh, Gilstrap rattled off one that's uh, untouchable, but before we get to that, you had your, you started it here first. Do you remember what you rattled off there? Oh, gee, I don't even remember what I had for breakfast this morning. Uh, it was about somebody's. I said it, it sounded like Ogden Nash. Oh, Moses supposes his toes are roses, but Moses supposes erroneously. To which Mr. Gilstrap responded, "It's a story of Mr. Shot and Mr. Knot who agreed to fight a duel." Shot was shot and not was not, so it's better to be shot than not. But if the shot that shot shot had shot shot and not not, then shot and not not would have been shot, and of course not would not. Exactly. Bill, do you have a follow-up to that? <laughs> not at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Larry, let's talk homeowners association laws because there are a few competing interests that are very much interested in January and getting some legislation passed. Yes, there are, and there is an issue with homeowners associations. Uh, for instance, uh, the West Virginia Secretary of State is the one to which the, uh, to whom the homeowners association have to report. They have to uh, file their uh, organization with the Secretary of State, listing their officers uh, and uh, their covenants or bylaws. Uh, but there is really nothing else uh, that's required by the Secretary of State, and so there's a lot of issues within homeowners associations uh, regarding. Uh, what happens, what doesn't happen, or what shouldn't happen. And so there's two organizations that are looking at this organization, uh, and that is the West Virginia, uh, I think it's called West Virginia Homeowners, um, and the other one is West Virginia Organization of Homeowners Associations. And there is legislation that is going to be uh, probably introduced this year, the Homeowners Associate, the Homeowners Voice, that's the other name, uh, did have a draft. Uh, I've seen it. I think they're going to be changing that draft. Uh, and I think there has to be some needful changes for homeowners associations requirements. But we have to be careful that we not go around Robin Hood's barn and make a mess of it. The first draft that I've seen for homeowners legislation is what I would call a Rube Goldberg organ organization where they it's all over the maps. But I do think there's going to be uh, legislation filed uh, this year. And uh, whether even gets a committee hearing is problematical at this point, but uh, there will be some interest in that. Is there is the legislation part of it going to enable individual homeowners to opt out of their own homeowners associations, Larry? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, uh, the the legislation, as I understand it, and I gave it a cursory look, and I've seen some analysis. It was put together by one of the uh, lawyers on the Senate uh, Government Organization Committee, uh, and I don't like it because it's all over the place, uh, requiring every county to come up with their own situation, and uh, I think it's just too much government and bad governance the way it's written. Uh, I, I think that will be corrected. But uh, I don't think, to the best of my knowledge, and I can be corrected, that it doesn't give people the option to opt out of homeowners association. And the whole purpose of a home asso homeowners association and what people are mostly concerned about is they provide their own maintenance for and, and construction for roads. Right, uh, which could be and, staggering. Which can be staggering. Uh, 
I'm fortunate I'm in one that doesn't charge an arm and a leg, but the only issue that comes up most of the time is whether the homeowner is paying their monthly assessment on the roads. But then there's other issues about what the homeowners association can or cannot do. And if a homeowner has an issue with what the HOA is doing, there's really little recourse. The Secretary of State does not intervene, uh, and the only recourse is going to court, and that could be expensive and nasty. Bill? Yeah, going back to first principles, uh, Larry, uh, what does the Secretary of State require now from the Homeowners Association, and what is being introduced by one of the two parties that would either add more teeth to the Homeowners Association or remove some of the existing teeth? Are the teeth right now at the Secretary of State's office? That the the Secretary of State right now is, is the, the primary agency that has any jurisdiction. The Secretary of State requires the Homeowners Association to register, but there's no penalty for not registering, to list their officers and to list their bylaws and covenants, and that's about it. So that it does not address the issue of roads or address the issue of anything else currently? No, no. And so the so one of the uh, uh, concerns or one of the uh, attempts now is to develop regulations, I assume statewide regulations, that would add more teeth in terms of roads or terms of something else. Uh, a lot I, more, I need to be fleshed out, Larry. Yeah, really a lot more teeth saying. in a lot of things, and it doesn't just put it under the Secretary of State. It puts it under various agencies, uh, involves counties to develop their own uh, in, uh, situation. And it is so complex and goes so many different directions that I don't think the legislation, as the current draft was written, uh, it will fly. Now, I, it is also my understanding that this legislation was prompted by the homeowner's voice and that they are currently in the process of taking a serious look and amending that. So I don't know what the final draft is going to look like. Okay. But is there any uh, – but – in, all, in either draft, is it the su suggestion that the state will take over the roads no. and HOA? So that's no. going to be remain the way it is right now. No, and there's been some argument made in the past that if uh, homeowners association uh, does not maintain the, the the roads, that the state at some point will take it over. I don't know where that information came for, from. That's not in the law. We don't even know how many homeowners associations there are in the West Virginia. And, and that would be interesting to find out. Uh, homeowners Voice says that they're the representative of, of the homeowners associations. Uh, I don't know that that's true. Uh, I know they have an interest in it. And then, of course, the West Virginia Organization of Homeowners Association essentially acts as a clearinghouse, not a lobbying organization, uh, to try to help homeowners with information regarding what's going on with their HOAs. But is there is there a problem, or are they trying to and trying to make a problem out of it? Well, there is a problem. If so, if if for instance, if I'm in an HOA and I am, and I'm not unhappy with my HOA, and my HOA does something that I don't like, there's no no real recourse uh, for the problem, and that's one of the problems. The other issue is that there's no real guidelines for how an HOA should operate. Uh, so that's that's an issue. So there seems to be some clarification. I think there needs to be some enforcement that the Secretary of State uh, can and should do uh, with Homeowners Association if they, if they uh, don't follow the guidelines. Under West Virginia law, what kind of <clears throat> teeth do the HOAs really have? I came here from Fairfax County, which is the land of the HOA, right. where the, our HOA would, would assess a $100 fine to people who had their trash cans out two days after after pickup and stuff. So they're really draconian things. Right. Um, <clears throat> we didn't – our driveway was six feet long. It was not an issue to take the, the trash right. can in and out. But in West Virginia, where I, I sense that HOAs are, are newer – not as common as they are in in Northern Virginia. What are the teeth if if the association wants to charge a hundred dollars for the trash can or an assessment because they've got something in their front yard that they don't want? How is that enforced? Well, that, that that's the issue because, for instance, let's say you're a homeowner and your assessment yearly dues, just for pick of a number, is a hundred is a hundred dollars, and you don't pay your dues. The only recourse the homeowners association has is to take you to court put a lien on your house and at some point maybe even uh, uh, take uh, take over your property but i'm thinking more in terms of the behavioral stuff the, the behavior Putting your car in the front yard where it's not allowed to be the the only thing they can do essentially is to send you a letter saying don't do that uh, other than that, there's no enforcement authority whatsoever unless the homeowners association can go w would go to court and 
usually that doesn't happen. I think homeowners associations are one of the most misunderstood things a homeowner would have to deal with. I, I live in homeowners association, and I think I've been president of our homeowners association for 10 years. Bless your heart. And, and this was after I steadfastly avoided going to meetings for 13 years because I knew if I went somehow I'd end up being on the board, right? Exactly. Uh, but it's meant for the protection of homeowner values in a, in a community. That's the, that's the sole interest, really, of the homeowners association. And to maintain the roads and inside the, the, the Depending. Like, like where I live, we're not in charge of the roads. Right. So none of our dues money goes to road maintenance. The county takes care okay. of that. But... I have a neighbor who's a wonderful person, but for whatever reason, they leave their trash cans out for a long time after the garbage has been collected. There's a rule against that. Right. Right. So you got two choices. You can complain about it to the homeowners association. You can ask your neighbor to bring their trash cans in earlier. Or because I know that this guy works on Capitol Hill and his wife is a nurse who works weird hours. I just go and grab the trash can and wheel it up to the garage for them. And then when they come home, they tuck it into the garage. If more people would do that instead of complaining and, and griping to a nameless face behind the letterhead, then I think that we would have less need for these draconian rules, as you, as you term them, John. But most people would rather complain than get up and drag their neighbor's trash can in and be nice. And what you have done and are doing would resolve not only HOA issues, it would mm -hmm. resolve a lot of issues uh, in society. Yes. Most people, when they buy their home and find out they're in an association or given a copy of the covenants, forget about it and don't know anything more after that unless the HOA says, for instance, one friend of mine uh, got a letter from the homeowners association said, I noticed you just put a gate on your driveway. That's not allowed. Take it down. Well, he took it down and didn't fuss, but he, well, he didn't fuss to them, but he fussed to everybody else. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and some of the some of the rules I think go overboard. I, when I lived in Montgomery Village, they had a, a rule in Montgomery Village that if you had a, a work van, you couldn't bring it home and park it in your driveway, or, or on the curb. Well, if you were a plumber or whatever, that kind of puts you in a bind. And frankly, does a plumber's lettering on his truck lower your home value? I don't think so. Exactly. But I, I think that's a ridiculous rule. But but there's also a guy who used to park his semi on the curb. That's probably a bit much in a neighborhood. Well, the curb is different, though. If they put it up into their driveway, you know, I think there's a certain amount, even within an HOA, and I'm not anti-HOA. I bought into a community that mm -hmm. has an HOA. Uh, but there's a crossover to property rights. So if I have my plumbing van and I park it in my driveway up next to my garage, I can't put it in my garage because it won't fit. It's oversized, right? Th that's, I don't think the neighborhood should get a vote in that because what else, am I, what else am I going to do with it? Right. right? Right. Well, in our development, uh, we have a long haul, haul truck driver that parks his semi on his property. Under our covenants, that's illegal, Correct. but the Homeowners Association hasn't done anything about that. It, also, people should keep in mind that the builder, when he creates the, uh, uh, creates the development, is the one that writes the covenants for the Homeowners Association, and then at some point, hopefully, passes that along to the elected homeowners association the other issue is that to amend the covenants of a homeowners association generally takes the majority vote of all homeowners to get all homeowners to go to an hoa meeting <laughs> and get a majority vote is almost impossible how generic larry are most of the covenants since they are most everyone is developed by the by the builder is different as different developers okay. uh so I, I know of one uh, group that has a developer uh, who's really, really good uh, and did a really, really good job with it, and the people were really happy with it. There's others that they just want to get out from under the rug and and put together something that's – the most prevalent thing that I've seen is most covenants say you can change the covenants, but it has to be a majority vote of all co homeowners, and that's just hard to do. Let me go back to first principles because I'm still having trouble understanding what's generated this lively debate among the uh, two different groups. Uh, is there a perceived or is there a recognized weakness that they're trying to uh, shore up so there would not not be a uh, it's not mentioned at all, not being addressed? What what's driving all this, Larry? Well, it's been an issue forever. Uh, the Homeowners Voice is a fairly new, newly organized organization, and they're the ones that have been pushing uh, 
this this legislation and this first legislative draft, which is, as I, again, it's my understanding is going to be changed. Uh, but there's all there's always been a concern, but it's always been one of those things that people fuss about, but don't do anything about because the only re- recourse they've had till now is to go to court. Damon Wright uh, on our Facebook page said, uh, if you don't like the rules of a homeowners association, don't move into a neighborhood with a homeowners association. Well, and that's a good point. But lots of times when you buy a house, you don't even know there's a homeowners association until you go to settlement. Well, you know, a good question for the real estate agent, right? Yeah. And my dad, uh, my late dad, Woody Kump, uh, was a broker. And he he was in uh, tandem with Pill and Pill uh, Law Firm. And he was just adamant about whenever there's a closing uh, that uh, the attorneys uh, do their due diligence and research if there's any liens on the property uh, and make sure that the, the new buyer is aware of the, the covenants. Not every attorney does that, uh, and that's sad, too. The uh, conversation on our Facebook page is as usual, they've uh, taken off in a pretty brisk pattern discussing the, the pros and cons of a homeowners association. And uh, I, I don't know. That, I think John's point is a good one. They're, they're not as prevalent in West Virginia as they are, but they become more prevalent the more development that you get. Uh, and I think the more you get subdivisions, obviously, the more you get homeowners associations. The issue of uh, maintaining your own roads, is, it's a costly one. It is. Larry, I was talking to Mike Hornby, and he, w- he told me the estimate that they got on the roads in the development where he lives. And my first thought was, in a community of 70 or 80 homes, that is an outstanding price tag. I don't want to say the amount, right. but it was a lot. And I don't mean a few thousand dollars, as you can imagine, when it would cost to replace roads. And I'm I'm startled that more HOAs haven't gone bankrupt in trying to replace a road over the years that they've been around. Well, and that's another issue, too, because most homeowners association covenants puts a cap on their yearly fees. Mm-hmm. Uh, for instance, mine per lot is $110 a year, which is not bad. Uh, but uh, our homeowners association was trying to get our roads, which essentially were all tar and chip, uh, paved and they couldn't get much help from the state so they dipped into their own pockets uh did blacktop on the the major portions of it uh the best they could uh had a contractor come in with the approval of the state to it and it cost them about forty thousand dollars uh which is a big chunk for homeowners association only has about 100 members now one of the most successful homeowners associations i'm aware of in uh, berkeley county is the Spring Mills Homeowners Association. They have about 800 homes. They have a professional HOA manager, uh, and they do really, really well. But most homeowners associations can have as little as eight to 10 houses in it, and they are, have no idea what's going on. Uh, and they and have no have idea what's of, going on. They'll never have enough money to replace a road with eight no, or 10 people no, chipping in on dues. No. And then there's an argument with homeowners associations, is this, is this under the jurisdiction of the homeowners association, or is this truly an access road that should be provided by the state? And those those arguments go on too. See, Rob, I disagree. I, it, timing is everything. If a, if a development is five, ten years old, mm-hmm. and it needs to have a new road, there should be. I mean, it's well managed. There should be a war chest that is specifically anticipating that that can be contributed. Mm-hmm. You know, at a reasonable amount of money per homeowner over a long period of time, and that's in a special fund. In the uh, previous uh, development I'm talking about, we had – they were in large townhomes. So we had common roofs over four different houses. And, exactly. You know, in 30 years, those are going to have to be replaced, right? So we had a war chest for that as well as a war chest right, for Right, but what – So it's a matter of planning. What were planning. your dues, John? I, I I'm not being coy. I don't I don't do the bills in our house, but it was something like <laughs> it, it was like 250 bucks a month, something like that. Right now, Larry said you're paying 110 a year a year. Well, and you're paying 250 a month where you were living. Yes, but, big difference but, in terms of building up a reserve fund to replace a road. And it was also for 90 homes, so uh-huh. you know, that does add up. Yeah, but, so, so try doing 250 a month in Berkeley County and see what kind of reaction you get. Well, and John makes a good point about planning, uh, and that's the issue too you really need to look down the road and provide some funds for contingencies. Uh, And quite frankly, I don't know how many homeowners associations there are. I think there are more in West Virginia than are are 
that people are aware of. I know they're more prevalent in the Eastern Panhandle uh, for a very variety of reasons, but we don't even know how many HOAs they are, there, there are. Uh, and I think we need to know how many HOAs there are, where they are, and then I think there needs to be some reasonable and prudent look at what kind of oversight and protections for the homeowners, and I'm talking about individual homeowner property rights, not necessarily rights of HOAs. Uh, I think there needs to be something done. But most people, as I said, when they buy their property, the first time they know they have covenants is when it's given to them, if it is given to them at settlement, and they just throw it in a sock drawer and that's sure. the end of it. Never see it again. In, in Maryland, they recently passed a law where every five years a homeowners association has to do a reserve study. And then, based on what the reserve study determines, you have to fund a certain amount of reserve funds to meet the projections the reserve study says you're going to have to expend exactly. in the following uh, years. And if you don't, then you're in violation, and you can risk whatever the penalties are for that uh, from the state. I don't know if West Virginia does that or not, no. but if the state is not interested in having to bail out homeowners associations that want to keep their fund their, their dues low then at some point along the way when a road needs to be replaced instead of the homeowners association replacing the road the taxpayers are going to have to replace it that that comes back to the basic question why does the government need to get involved in this issue because, because they could get stuck with the tab of, of replacing roads well not right now they cannot because the state or the county has no responsibility for the roads uh and i as we hear mike carl say all the time free market free market drives, and the homeowner association buys well, but, into a development. But, Bill, this, this, well the, the counties are supposed to pay their jail bill, right? And, Larry, how many counties do not pay their jail bill the state has to make the money for? Totally different, two different issues, Rob. Of course altogether. it's two different issues, yeah. but it's the same principle. It's something no. you're supposed to pay for, but you don't have the funds to pay for, so who pays for it? Well, there's the also state. a relative scale of when does a road need to be replaced. Just on my commute to the radio station, I can tell you the bar is very low <laughs> for when, yeah. when a road needs to be it replaced. Really but but I, I come back to with the jail bill, we all have a responsibility. That's clear in our uh, in statute. But it's not clear in our statute that the government has a role to play or should be playing with the homeowners association. The governor has government has no role to play in the homeowners association. And there and there's the rub. Uh, exactly uh, right. With and the, the roads. And then the question. Well, with anything really, because it's it's a it's a well group, there is one thing. Uh, that's, if there's like reckless driving or speeding, or there's a murder in the HOA, then there's jurisdiction. Oh sure, sure, but that's not what we're talking about no, here, Larry. No. So. Well, if you have an impassable road from deterioration and you're trying to get emergency vehicles down that road or into that development and it's frankly it's just impassable who do you think is ultimately going to have to repair that road well, well we had this a few years ago and uh chuck horse just reminded us the orphan road program and there were so many homeowner association with roads that were impassable so the state moved in at for one time one time only it said we will assume control of these roads that cannot be done by the HOAs. But it was a one-time, one-time only. What I'm hearing you say, Larry, there's a possibility that the state, that the government may get involved into more, get more involved in the homeowner association and the mechanics of it, including the upkeep of the roads. Well, it's not in, not so much including the upkeep of the roads. For instance, I know one situation where in a homeowners association the roads were so bad that the county school system said, we're not going to take the school bus up those roads anymore. You have to take them to the head of the home so owner, interest of the homeowners association for the kids to be kids to be picked up. But uh, isn't that the responsibility of the homeowners association and not the state? Under current law, it is, a, is. And the only purpose, in my mind, of the homeowners association originally is to maintain those roads. And that is the responsibility of the homeowners association. But, there, so if, but if there was an orphan road bail out once what makes you think it wouldn't happen again Bill? well i think this is where we're going down to exactly that's a path that we're setting up for that there will be a assumption of orphan road sometime in the future and yeah once a state assumes mm -hmm. uh, responsibility for the road they maintain the responsibility for the road I, well, I, but this is my point for not funding your reserves to maintain your roads the, a homeowners association development is private property, and the private property has been divided up into private home ownership. So they jointly, severally own the roadway that's there. So it's essentially their driveway. 
It I is. don't know. I don't know why the state would get involved in repairing my driveway to get up to my house any more than I would understand why the state would get involved to repair the driveway that leads to the driveway that goes up. Because well, a lot of uh, scare tactics have been used. We cannot get our kids to school. Or we cannot get an ambulance up to, to pick somebody up in, t- in times of emergency. Uh, so what they're doing, they're back. the homeowners are backing away from their their responsibilities and giving it to the state and said, you solve a problem for us. Well, and the other thing regarding the or- Orphan Road uh, program, and I remember that, that orphan road program with that one-time funding, that funding got used up real quick. Sure. Uh, and, and, you know, they used it up real quick. It was first come, first serve, and was was no more. Uh, so it's an issue. But, Whether or not it's even going to get a committee hearing, I don't know, but it is an issue that continues to fester. Larry, we are out of time. Appreciate you coming in. I appreciate being had. It's always nice to be had. Rose, robust discussion on homeowners associations this morning to start off our week. And uh, appreciate Delegate Larry coming in at 833.